Hey guys, we're on our home range today. We're going to talk a little bit about mirage, wind reading, and in general how wind affects air gunning in particular. Now with centerfire rifles, you know, these ranges that we're shooting at, wind's not going to be that big of a factor. But with an air rifle, 75 yards, it's a big factor, let alone 150. And we're going to stretch it out and show you what happens when the wind comes in. And most importantly, how to understand what it's doing and then utilize that to your advantage. All right, so we've got our target out there at 130 yards. The trees way in the distance are showing activity. The grass in front is showing activity. The grass is telling us the wind direction, and so are the trees in the background. And we know that because the grass is moving, that we're gonna be, you know, five miles an hour, maybe more, it depends on how hard it moves, but that's kind of where you end up getting stuck. You know that you're at a five mile an hour wind at least, and the branches in the background tell you that way out there, it's even stronger. But we want to know about the air in between us and the target because that is what affects the flight of our projectile. I could care less what it's doing 400 yards beyond my target, to be honest with you. So we're going to be focused in on the target like we're going to shoot it, and we can't see the mirage for the wind that's in between us. Why? Because we're not focused in between us. So we need to back that focus off. So we're gonna back it off till the target itself starts to become just a little fuzzy. And what that's gonna do is make the mirage that we see be from the air in between us. Now, relax your eye. Act like you're looking at scenery. Forget the target, forget the crosshairs. Do you see it? Do you see those little waves that are leaving the ground, going up through the trees in the background? A little stronger than 45 degree, I would say. It's not quite laid out in front of us. It's angled off at maybe a 20 to 30 degree angle. That tells me we're about eight miles an hour. And that's the air just in front of our target, which is a really cool thing to know because if you have buildings around you, you're not even gonna be able to feel the wind correctly. It might be tunneling around that building and hitting you from an opposite direction that it's actually blowing. So, now that we know that the air two thirds of the way to my target is leaving at a 20 to 30 degree angle off the ground via the mirage, that's telling me I've got about an eight mile an hour wind out there. Now, I'm gonna take the camera off the gun and we're gonna look at the surroundings. All right, so this is the range that we're on. Now, that bush right there in the center of your screen is showing me that, yeah, wind's hitting it pretty good. It's about five to eight miles an hour because it's actually moving the branches. And these branches are moving a touch as well. Um, our target is out there on top of the hill. So we could think, yeah, eight miles an hour the whole way. Well, no, and here's the reason why. We've got these trees and they're moving because they're being hit by and therefore partially blocking our wind. So is this hill. It kind of ramps up and takes it away and the air that we're shooting through right there is gonna be much less affected than it would be if we were shooting out in the open over there. We know that two thirds of the way the target it was eight as well. I've got a nice steady wind, but how do we factor that in? Now, the wind is coming from the right, which means we need to push into the wind a bit. Um, the cool part about this is the fact that Spindrift is going to take care of some of that for us. It's not a lot, um, about three quarters at this range with this load combo, but the fact of the matter is, it's going to factor in. Um, so given the dialogue that we had before, I'm going to take a shot. I think that we're gonna land about three and a half to four of what we need. Um, I could be wrong, but that's what follow-up shots are for. Now, those two that are on the dot already, those two at the bolt, were from before, it has nothing to do with this session. Uh, they were good shots, but sadly I can't claim them in this wind. So let's see what we've got now. Going three and a half. and we've been blocked. So now we get on correction really quick, hold one, and we've got a good wind call. Now, 
it seems like we just did a whole lot of work for nothing since it didn't work out. But with varied terrain like this, you're going to run into that sometimes. And a key to good shooting is always to be able to correct and get on. And I noticed something really cool. This is going to give us a really nice idea of what happens when an object is in the way. <clears throat> and also what a boiling mirage looks like. So the truck is blocking the heat, or I'm sorry, the truck is blocking the wind from coming across the ground like it normally does. So those waves, as you can see, are almost going straight up uh, right in front of the truck there. Now that is a boiling mirage. And they boil all the way up with the object until we get towards the top and then it blows off in that direction. And yes, it's what you'd expect. But imagine if you didn't see that object or if the wind wasn't there at all. That boiling, that straight up wave pattern that we have in front of the truck there, that is gonna indicate that there's no wind or that you're looking directly into the wind or away from the wind. So a headwind or a tailwind. That straight up boil is always an indicator to just let, let the round fly and do it quick because they don't last long. Now there are times when it's going to be really difficult to see the mirage. One of those times is when it's cloudy out. You don't need sunlight for the mirage to be there, but it's really helpful seeing it. As you can see, there's just not that much going on right now. Um, so now we're going to resort to vegetation. So we see that the veg is moving. We know the direction. The fact that it's moving lightly suggests that we have about a five mile an hour wind. We can cheat down to my little wind flag here. Now this is almost coming right at us. So we're far from a full value wind, especially for the majority of the flight. It looks like it goes slightly more um, towards a full value wind out here, but it's definitely not a full value wind um, the whole way. So we're gonna say, okay, we have a five mile an hour wind. Normally that would be about three and a half um, MOA with my round if it was full value, but we're gonna turn it. Um, we're gonna turn it towards us. So let's cut that in half and say that now we're about 1.75 and then factor in spin drift, which is gonna kick out to the right uh, about three quarters of an MOA. So we're down to one. And if that all holds true, and we should only have to push right one. And there it is. It's a little high, but the wind calls right. There we go. So Mirage is our buddy, right? It tells us where the wind's blowing from, how fast it's going, where it has no effect at all. It's also kind of our enemy. It can make the target look like it's somewhere it's not. When the mirage blows, when those heat waves blow, the way that they're blowing is also the way that they shift the target image. So a left to right wind can actually make the target look to you like it's right of where it actually is. There are a couple ways to deal with this and Luckily, it's pretty easy for our short ranges. I suggest that if you think the Mirage is strong enough that it's moving the target somewhere that it actually isn't, just back off your magnification. That should get you to a point where you can actually see the target through the Mirage because Mirage shows up worse the higher the magnification is. Now, if all of this has you 100% confused, or feeling like a moron with your pants around your ankles, like I did after shooting and missing while I was explaining it. Let's go over it one more time. Okay, so we've got a nice mirage visible this morning. You can see it coming off the top of the roof there, um, and it shows up really nice against that fence brace. Now, if our target was on top of this roof, we'd be happy to know what it's doing there, but what we really wanna know is what's it doing in between. So we need to back our focus off to the air in between. And one way to do that is just to pick an object in between, get the crosshairs parallax perfect. Now let's scoot back up to the roof. And you can see that the mirage pops a little nicer now. And we're focusing on the air that's in between us and the roof. And if you wanna get even further back, just back the focus off until that becomes truly a bit fuzzy. 
and now you're, the mirage that you're seeing is even closer to you. And it's pretty obvious to me that it is leaning left and that the wind is light. I would say that that mirage is somewhere around 45 degrees right now, which would indicate a five mile an hour wind. Really nice to know what it's doing mid-range, not just at target or at your face. I really hope you guys got something out of that. Mirage is just one of those things that's really hard to capture. Some days I felt like I was never going to get it done. It took me over a week and a half. I even reached out to Air Gunner Bob to see if he had any Mirage footage on file. And uh, it's just really tough to capture. I hope that you guys will practice it because it's one of those things that it just clicks when you finally see it the first time. And if you're not seeing it, don't despair. Rely on your vegetation right now and always just dedicate a couple minutes to trying to see it on rooftops or roads. Those tend to be the easiest spots to grab it. So I hope you subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time.